can you tell us a bit more about the, the back story of, of Homo Eraticus? Well, Homo Eraticus is really, I mean, literally just means the wandering man. It, in the context that it's all about movement, opportunism, the hunter-gatherer, migration, and in a way quite a contemporary topic because we are more and more reminded of the realities of, um, of what migration means in a, an increasingly overcrowded Europe particularly. It becomes a political hot potato that was referred to when it was referred to at all as immigration. In the last two or three months everything swung around to talking in more general migration terms because it was a two-way two scenario about people leaving as well as coming and it didn't quite make it sound as if you were um, from the far right trying to close borders and doors to people in need or people coming to work. Um, we're all from somewhere else and uh, as, uh, <clears throat> as Gerald Bostock uh, says in his foreword to Homo Eraticus, as, uh, you know, we're, we're, all, uh, we're all from somewhere else, get over it. You know, it's, we, we can't escape the fact of our historical backgrounds and the fact that somewhere along the line we, you know, we were unwelcome invaders uh, in, our, in our ancestral days. Now you mentioned Gerald Bostock, of course he crops up uh, again um, sort of as a basis uh, for, the, for the new record. Um, what was that? Well Gerald Bostock's a convenient alter ego because you know, he can voice sentiments that I can't. Um, John le Carre could voice sentiments as John le Carre, his uh, nom de plume, which he couldn't when he was a serving officer of uh, um, one of Her Majesty's services, because um, he was, of course, uh, an MI6 officer in his, uh, in his early uh, pre-professional writer career. I mean, we use aliases, we use convenient alter egos to express things that are perhaps not our views but it's stepping into a different character. I'm not an actor, but I can understand the, the analogy when it comes to being a writer, that sometimes you need to create a character that's flesh and blood in a way, rather than just, uh, rather than just exist as words on a page. You've got to give it that, um, that backstory, that, uh, that subject authenticity that comes from knowing a bit more about another person, even if that person is fictitious. So that, that's why Gerald Bostock has a loose engagement in, in this context, and uh, whereas Tab 2 was theoretically about whatever happened to Gerald Bostock, well, this album is theoretically Gerald Bostock returns to his original um, uh, childhood forte of writing lyrics um, for uh, a prog rock album. So it's kind of vaguely amusing, it keeps its continuity, but it's not thick as a brick three. Mm -hmm. 